Hello, everybody. Sorry about the uh, slight delay, uh, but we are ready and raring to go. Thank you for joining us on the live stream. I'd uh, love to hear from uh, some of you and uh, hear what you've got to say. Maybe a question or two uh, you've got to ask as well. Um, if you leave the question in the comment below, uh, I'll get around to as many of them uh, as I possibly can uh, over the coming few minutes. Now, you might want to ask me um, perhaps about the performance yesterday against Blackpool, which was absolutely magnificent. Uh, and Forrest in a very decent position uh, attacking the final few weeks of the season. So perhaps you want to talk about that, the difference Steve Cooper has made, or maybe about uh, my time covering Forrest as well over uh, recent years uh, as well, up until a couple of years ago. Uh, so leave your question uh, in the comment below and we'll get to uh, those as we go. Um, don't forget, of course, to like the video, subscribe the uh, subscribe to the channel it sends it to more and more people as well uh, but most importantly if you've got any questions or any comments um, then i'd love to hear from you and get in touch first one today uh, is from thomas uh, who says who's one of the gold members actually of uh, chippers club so thank you thomas uh, says having been pretty close to the fowers crisis did you fear for the future of nottingham forest uh, with him in control um there have been a few moments, actually, when um, it looked dicey um, for Forrest going forward. I, I've always felt, rightly or wrongly, that somebody somewhere would bail them out somehow. Um, after the tragic passing of, of Nigel Doughty, there was a period, obviously, before Fawaz came in, when um, the, the future looked um, pretty uncertain. Um and, you know, the club may have had to scale back, but it always felt like, particularly in the championship, that they were an attractive proposition and somebody um, would come in and, and buy the club uh, and, and help it move forward. Now, whether they were the right people or the wrong people, it always felt that somebody would come in and, um, as I say, buy the club uh, and, and take it on for at least a couple of three years. Um, you know... I, I don't think there's much argument that Fawaz's uh, heart was in the right place. Um, I'm not convinced he was um, brilliantly advised and had the right people uh, running things for him. He obviously had times when he had people uh, in as chief executive, Paul Faulkner, for example, Adrian Bevington, um, but then perhaps they weren't given the um, the license, the control to, to run the club in the way that an English football club should be run uh, and use their experience to help guide and and, and help Fawaz um, uh, develop the club. Because, you know, in my mind, there's no doubt that he, he wanted the best for Forrest. He, you know, he's not taking money out and, um, you know, he's, he's, he's doing it for all the best reasons, but I think he needed um, a bit more advice. Um, and to take that advice from from people who knew the the English game, so uh, I've never really felt uh, that Forest were in any danger financially. Um, as I say, a big enough club for somebody to come forward and, and buy them, particularly these days from you know all around the world. Um, uh, so I didn't feel that. Uh, thank you for the question, though, Thomas. Keep them coming. Leave them in the comments below, and I'll get to um, as many of them as I can. Um, over the next uh, half an hour, 40 minutes or so, however long uh, we're on for. That kind of is in your hands with the number of questions we get. So uh, that's up to you. Uh, Bryn says, of all of the young players who came through the Forest youth ranks, uh, who do you think failed most to live up to expectations? Um, I'll probably bow to other people's judgments here. A lot of people speak very fondly and um, about Keith Foy, um, young Irish left back who was going to be the next big thing. Um and it didn't um, necessarily work out for him at Forest. I'm pretty sure he went back to Ireland and um, maybe had a career in Ireland. But there was a lot of talk about Keith Foy, um, who came through at the same time as, as Andy Reid, um, uh, but perhaps didn't go on to, certainly didn't go on to the greatness that uh, that Andy Reid did. Uh, but he was one that came through and there was a lot of talk about. Uh, James Perch was another one that people were talking about for some time and genuinely very excited about um him as well as a as a potential player um and obviously he went on to have a fantastic career i think you know any of us would would have bitten the hand off uh, to have the career that james perch had um and has in the game still playing of course at 
at Mansfield, but played at Newcastle and Wigan in the Premier League. Um, so there was a lot of excitement about Perch. I often wonder about Perch, actually, whether had he remained uh, at centre-half, and I wonder if this occurs to him as well, and maybe it's a question he has, um, you know, if, if he'd stayed at centre-half and been allowed to develop at centre-half and maybe even grown, I don't know, three or four inches more, um, whether he'd have had a career at the very highest level um, of English football. I don't know. We will never know. Um, uh, but he was one that came through. I think what's exciting now is is the youngsters that are coming through and finding their way into the first team for Forest at the moment. You know, you see um, so many coming through um, and making, you know, not just joining in, to use a phrase, at first team level. Um, they're genuine top end first team players. You know, Brennan Johnson yesterday, tremendous at Blackpool. Um, Joe Worrell, another one. Um, you know, they're not just part of the first team they are so important in the first team and, and influential in the in the first team and also in a successful first team as it is at the moment as well so i think huge credit to obviously to gary brazil and um, and all his coaches and the staff at the academy the category one academy which will hopefully make it uh, even better in, in coming years uh, but also to to those managers that have picked those players um you know, going back, I mean, Gary himself picked, say, for example, the likes of of Ben Osborne um, for a game at Ipswich. I remember it very clearly. Um, but you know, it takes it takes a bit of courage as a as a manager. And you might say, well, you know, it doesn't take much courage to pick Brennan Johnson. What well, uh, an outstanding player um, he is. But you know, not all managers put youngsters in um, into first teams and and have success. By doing that, you know, many go down the, the experience route of having experienced players and it's them that get you promoted. Um, so fair play to Steve Cooper, for, for obviously for lots of things, but um, for continuing to pick the young players. And as I say, fair play to, to, to managers in the past for um, picking players, giving them an opportunity and showing what they can do. Uh, keep your questions coming. Um, Lardy says, during your time with the BBC covering Forest, who was your favourite person at the club to work with? Um, <sighs> that's a difficult question. I managerially, I got on with most. Um, some you get on better than with others, that's human nature. Um, Sean O'Driska was fantastic to, to deal with. I've, we have touched on this in the, in the past. On, on Q and A's, most of the managers have been, at least on a um, business-like basis, have been very good to deal with. Um, as you'll Im imagine, some you get on better with others on, on a human level. Um, Sean O'Driscoll was very good on a human level. Colin Caldwell, Paul Hart, uh, Billy Davis, first time round, um, not second time round clearly, but first time round was very good. Um, yeah, I, th I think most of them. But, you know, so many good people at the club that you've worked with who um, some of you will have heard of, but not many. Fraser Nicholson, for example, was the press officer for the first goodness knows how long uh, while I was there. Magnificent press officer, brilliant at his job. Um, couldn't wish for better. Sad when he left the club um, when Billy Davis was the manager second time around. Uh, that was uh, very sad. Uh, other people like Ben White was good to deal with. Lovely fella as well. Um just from a press relations point of view, but there are other people um, uh, working at the club. John Pelling as finance director, lovely guy. So many, actually, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of people um, at football clubs who work, who work behind the scenes. Um, Simon Fotheringham, who's, to the best of my knowledge, still at the club. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he is. Um, fantastic fellow as well. You know, so many good people. Um, Amy Sutton, who worked closely with the players and, um, in, with the manager as well, going back a bit. Uh, brilliant people. I've, there's so many I'll have, I'll have forgotten. So um, football clubs are generally, uh, people at football clubs are generally very nice. There might be people close to the coal face, if you like, who are um, less easy to deal with, um, but generally uh, football clubs. That I've I've had the pleasure of dealing with Forest and Notts County and Mansfield. Um, I would say they're all... Um, Good people at all of them, um, and really, um, 
nice to work with uh, generally as well. Lewis asks, is this year the year? It's beginning to look that way, isn't it? Uh, I have to say I was hugely impressed yesterday. Uh, you know, all the times over the last 25 years I've been to Blackpool and it's you know, never an easy place to go. Tough pitch, difficult conditions, the wind howls in. No problem at all yesterday. Uh, very open game. You know, I thought Blackpool had a few chances as well. Um, but the way Forrest, Forrest just looked so not in control yesterday, but just if they needed to go up another level, they could have gone up another level as well. They just looked so dominant. I was I was hugely impressed. Um, and Lewis says, in terms of players that didn't live up to expectation, Lewis McGugan, yes. I don't know if it's... Uh, that's a different Lewis, isn't it? That's asking the question to actually Lewis McGugan. But if it is Lewis McGugan, hello, Lewis. I hope you're well. Um, uh, yes, to a certain extent. Um, and I mean, there were times, you know, for a 10-game spell where McGugan was absolutely unplayable. Um, magnificent to watch. Um, so, yes, to some extent, I would I would go with that. Um, Hockey Geek says, who's coming up in the interviews? Uh, Montagnier and Sabri, if possible. Um, yes, I need to put a couple of calls in, don't I, to, to fund some people. Um, I generally only mention them if they are recorded and in the can because, um, you know, things can go wrong and people can change their minds or, or whatever. So coming up uh, for members very soon, in fact, probably today, uh, will be David Prutton, who is excellent value. And I think you're going to like that interview a lot. Uh, it's quite a lengthy one. Uh, so that'll be available next weekend to non-members of Chippers Club. Uh, Steve Chettle is in the can as well. Um, so uh, that'll be coming up over coming weeks as well. And obviously there are more that are lined up at the moment, but I just don't want to tempt fate by saying who they are, but um, I'm sure you're going to like them. Let's put it that way. Um, so there's more coming up and uh, obviously there's a huge back catalogue as you can see some of the names uh, down below. Uh, that's not all the names, but some of them are there. So a uh, good time uh, if there are no if you're not a member, for example, over the next week, uh, for you to catch up. I know a lot of you have uh, enjoyed uh, the interview with Darren Fletcher, um, the BT Sport commentator who spent a lot of years covering Forest for for Radio Trent, and also for Century as well. So um, uh, yes, there's there's plenty below. If you've not subscribed, do subscribe to the channel because then they'll pop up on your feed automatically over coming weeks and months. Sometimes it takes a long time for them to pop up on your feed. So if you also click notifications, it notifies you when a new video has come up. But if you go to the channel itself, you'll see all the videos and you can go back. I'm trying to think who the first one was. Was it David Johnson? Maybe Colin Frey? Um, going back to last August. So uh, plenty for uh, you to have a look at. Um, but as I say, uh, David Prutton available to gold and silver members of Chippers Club uh, later today and available next weekend from next weekend for uh, everybody else who's uh, a bronze member or not a member. Andrew, any uh, thoughts of working back in the UK? Uh, not at the moment. No, Andrew, it's been two years. Um, I've been out here now. March 2020 is when I moved out. Um, so no thoughts about that at the moment, to be honest. Um, uh, really enjoying life out here. Um, it's good. The weather's good. A bit chilly at the moment. Uh, down to about 18 degrees at the moment, but then it is, you know, eight o'clock at night nearly. Uh, so uh, that that makes a difference. So no, uh, really enjoying life out here, enjoying working out here and uh, the climate and everything. So no thoughts at the moment, but you know, life changes, doesn't it, uh, over time? So uh, we'll see. But um, no thoughts at the moment. Uh, Jake says, could we see a promotion season for both Nottingham clubs? Um, uh, yes, is very much the answer. Uh, I said this on the last Q and A, but. The way Forest are going, I wouldn't rule out. It's very unlikely, I, I accept. And given the club involved as well, I, I accept it's unlikely. But Easter's a big time. And if if there were a couple of dodgy results for Bournemouth over Easter, with Forest having to play them as well, um, then I wouldn't rule out. I think it's a very small chance. It's a 3% chance. But I wouldn't completely rule out automatic promotion. What I would say is that if it is the playoffs, Forrest are heading into them in pretty fine fettle. And I would imagine, as it stands at the moment, if Forrest made it and the other clubs remained much of a muchness as they are at the moment, then um, 
Forest would be one to fear, I would imagine. And Notts County, after their tremendous result at South End yesterday, um, which is a bit disappointing from a South End point of view, but you know, we were in the bottom three in uh, around Christmas, and now we're very comfortably mid table, having lost, I think, four of our last five games. So I'd have taken it where we are. Uh, but yes, Notts County going well as well, seem to have uh, had a bit of a stumble and then come through it and come through the other side as well. So fingers crossed. Um, that both get up. Uh, Grant Chaps, uh, which is close to being the... Is he still Transport Secretary? I think he is. Um, I lose track of, of who's in charge these days. I say in charge. Anyway, uh, let's not get into politics. Uh, Grant says, have you had, had many barbecues in Australia? Quite a few, actually. Although I would say it's been a very wet autumn and late summer over here, so there's not been the opportunity um, in recent weeks. Um, but uh, hopefully more... Uh, as it's warmed up a bit over the last day or two uh, to come in the coming weeks. Uh, thank you for your question. Keep them coming below. Um, Dolby, Jay Dolby asks, Lewis Graben or Robbie Earnshaw? I don't think I can... I don't think I can split them. I'm glad they're in different eras because I could watch them both play. Um... I like them both. I, I can't decide. Uh, you let me know if you've you know, got a particular thought about either. Um, but I I find that difficult to split. Um, yep, I'm not splitting them. I refuse to do it. Uh, Alan, Alan Friedman um, says, Steve Cooper is the best forest manager since who, in your opinion? Well... I think we'll know that at the end of the season because I think if he managed to get Forrest into the Premier League, you'd have to say the best manager since Bassett. I mean, Bassett, I would argue, probably had a better squad because it still had all those Premier League players in it. Probably since Frank Clark, I would say. I think Frank Clark gets doesn't get the recognition he deserves. And, we, you know, we're chatting to... A, fair few former players of his over past weeks and obviously coming up with, with Steve Chetlin coming weeks as well. Um, you know, given the job he did to follow on from Brian Clough, I mean, how difficult must that have been? Um, but, to, you know, turn it around to a certain extent and get Forrest promoted and finish third in the Premier League the season after? Yeah, I would say that. I mean, other Forrest managers since... Frank Clark have, have had spells, haven't they? Billy Davis clearly first time round, um, getting Forrest to the playoffs twice, but he didn't get um, Forrest promoted. So, I mean, if Forrest get to the playoffs this season and don't go up, then you'd probably say he's the best Forrest manager since Billy Davis first time round. Is that fair? Um, let me know what you think. Um, but if he gets Forrest promoted, then he, I would imagine probably the best since Frank Clark. I would say. Um, is that fair enough? Let me know what you think. Um, there have been others um, since then who, you know, I talk Karanka had a very good spell. Sean O'Driscoll had a very good spell. Paul, Clark, uh, Paul Hart clearly had a, a very good spell um, before Billy Davis' first time round. Others have had good spells. Um, but, um, yeah, I think Alan, um, to cut that long answer short. I think we'll know at the end of the season and I think we can make a judgment. Bearing in mind, he's not had a full season in charge yet. Uh, the other thing I would say is if, if Forrest don't go up this season, um, say they miss out on the playoffs, which I can't see happening at the moment, but uh, or don't go up via the playoffs, um, which is still odds against, you'd have to say, given you know there are four teams in the playoffs. Reaching the playoffs doesn't mean you're promoted. It means you have a 25% chance in theory. Um I think it'd be a tremendous season next season, um, and Forrest would be rightly amongst the favourites to to win promotion next season. But let's hope it happens this season. Um, uh, Lewis uh, has come back to us and said, "We'll come back to Mark in a second. Uh, Lewis says, "I'm not Lewis McGugan. Have you got your holiday book for the 29th of May already? I haven't yet, but that is something that somebody asked me about in a previous Q and A, where I'd come back for a playoff final. We'll see." Uh, Mark says, "Would you have taken a job on national radio?" Uh, five Live, for example, if the opportunity ever arose? Mm, tough question. I never did arise, so <laughs> I never did have that um, 
question. Um, so I uh, can't answer it honestly. It depends what it would be to do, really. The, the thing I liked about working for Radio Nottingham is that, uh, and local radio generally, is that you could do everything. You know, I, I, I'd go to Forest Games, obviously, and present from there on a Saturday. Might be at the ice hockey in the evening. Um, go and do the interviews during the week. Um, go to a frotch fight. Uh, go to watch the cricket and work at the cricket, do the 2020 or a county championship game, whatever it might be. You could do all of that um, at Radio Nottingham, whereas at Five Live, obviously, they have more people to do these uh, things. So I always felt that um, big fish, small pond, if that doesn't sound too arrogant, was better than being a small fish in the big pond of the whole of the UK where you'd be fighting to get on air, I would think, because they have so much more sport to cover. Um, Christian, best signing of the window in January. Well, I, I tell you one guy I thought played tremendously well yesterday was Keenan Davis. Um, I thought he was brilliant yesterday. Didn't get didn't get a goal, but just caused so many problems for Blackpool uh, and their defence, and that that allowed space for the likes of Brennan Johnson and Zinkenagel and, and other people to um, to find that space. So I I think Keenan Davis has proved a very shrewd addition uh, so far. Uh, Thomas again, what's the normal routine for a Forest away trip? Who drove? What food was available at the away ground? And how long it takes to set up and pack away? Okay, let's take those in order. Um, routine would be you'd aim to get to the away ground for midday, which I know sounded really early because we're not on air till half past one. Um, but you need to allow time in case of traffic. I mean, if it was a London game, you'd probably allow a bit more extra time. So you'd probably aim to get there at half 11, um, maybe even earlier. So you'd aim to get there for, the, for 12. Um, who drove? Dro driving was shared between uh, myself and Colin Frey. And we'd normally pick up the expert on the way, depending on uh, where they lived. Um, Hodgie, obviously, in the Nottingham area. Lawsy, a bit further north. Um, so we'd meet somewhere in a motorway services somewhere. It was all glamour. Um, uh, Sutts were a bit more northwestish. So again, we'd meet somewhere just off a motorway somewhere. Uh, food available at the away ground. That very much defended, de depended on the away ground and the club. So Chelsea was magnificent. Arsenal magnificent. Um, sometimes you didn't even get a uh, some grounds. You didn't get a cup of tea or anything. Most you did. Most most championship grounds championship clubs uh, would give you um, at least a warm drink um, and generally something to eat. Um, Forest for years was not very good food-wise. Um, no, that's not fair. It, it was, I mean, to be fair, you're grateful for anything. So let's let's be clear about that. Um, but about three or four years ago, in fact, maybe even before that, they really upped it uh, food-wise. So the food for the visiting press is... Uh, very good at Forest, or at least it was up until a couple of years ago, and I can't imagine that it's got worse um, since. So, um, you know, credit to Forest for that because it was it was really good and people enjoyed it. And you know, people think, well, what does it matter? It doesn't really in the grand scheme of things, but it it does give an impression to visiting journalists, particularly you know national journalists. But it just means they think fondly of the club to start with. You start off in a good frame of mind. You've been welcome to the ground. Would you like a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever? They just think forest of the, uh, they think fondly of the club. Um, so yeah, that that does make a, a real difference. So um, Arsenal, Chelsea were, were very very good. Um, Fulham was good, and then went downhill a bit, but Fulham was good. Um, anywhere really, that just a nice cup of tea or a cup of coffee um, at some point during the afternoon was was very nice. Uh, Wigan, I remember being very bizarre where they would serve you food, which was great, but it was in the press room, which was a three or four minute walk away, and they'd serve it at half time, <laughs> which, you know, if you were a newspaper journalist, for example, might be might be fine because uh, you could nip away, not miss anything and come back. But for somebody like me, who's on air for the whole of half time, your chance to go and get your pie <laughs> was during half time. And if you didn't go then, you'd shot it. Uh, as I said, I was on air for half time, so that was no good uh, whatsoever. Um, more questions. 
uh, oh, sorry, I don't think we quite finished with Thomas, did we? Um, how long did it take to set up and pack away? Uh, not that long, actually. 15 minutes, 20 minutes to set up, same to pack away. Um, Colin Frey was very good at setting up and packing away. Um, so, uh, yeah, he uh, he did a lot of that uh, to his credit. And then, um, then you do the Facebook Lives um, back in the day. And that would that would actually take a little while to set up because you've got a camera, obviously, tripod, lighting, uh, if, you, if you needed lighting. Um, so that would take a, a little while and obviously the same to pack up afterwards as well. So um, not too long is the, is the general answer. Uh, Bears, I think I've missed out somebody's question. So let, yes, let's do them in order. Dan says, other than the good weather, what are the attractions with Australia? Uh, more relaxed lifestyle, I would say. Um, the beaches are pretty good out here, um, but more relaxed lifestyle. Uh, enjoy the way of life. Um, lots of things, really. Um, the sport, the wide, the, the variety of sport, which obviously they have in the UK as well. Um, lots of things <laughs> is the answer. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, to that question I just touched on there, Bears. How worried would you be if Forest didn't gain promotion on how the Forest squad would look like next season? Yeah, I mean, it's speculation on my part, but it would be difficult to see if Forest didn't go up. I hope they could, but it would be difficult to see, say, Brennan Johnson and, and Joe Worrell uh, at the club next season. I, I have no inside track on that. I'm, it is pure speculation on my part. But I think they're just so outstanding at this level that surely um, championship clubs are... Uh, sorry, Premier League clubs are going to come sniffing um, even more uh, in the summer, uh, I would think, for those two and obviously for others as well. Jed Spence isn't even a Forest player, clearly, so it would be difficult to see him at the club next season if Forest are not in the Premier League and there may be others as well. Now, that probably sounds a bit doom and gloom if Forest don't get promoted. What I would say is that Steve Cooper's record so far and those at the club that he works with um, of bringing players in has been excellent so far. I can't think of too many dud signings um, that have been made in the last uh, six or six months or so since January um, compared to previous few years. So uh, I would say that um, if the worst happened and Forrest didn't get promoted and those players did leave, well, one, they would leave for an awful lot of money, you would fancy. Um, I don't know how many millions we're talking, but it's got to be near 50, isn't it? If it's if it's Wallall and Brennan Johnson, again, speculation on my part, um, 25 each. I mean, that's the sort of figures perhaps you're talking. I don't know. Um, maybe less than that. But, you know, there, there's an awful lot of money for, for a manager, a good manager, uh, to spend in the right way. Um, Hockey Geek again. I remind you, if you've not, um, seen one of these lives before then the comments are below so if you've got a question or a thought um, which will make our way through uh, over the next what should we keep going for another 10 minutes or so um, then um, uh, leave it below and I'll get to it as soon as I can Hockey Geek says agreed Chip as the buzz around the club at the minute is as good as it's been since Davis first spell isn't it a shame we have to delineate between the two spells but I think we we rightly do. Uh, thoughts on selling uh, Brennan Johnson if we don't get promoted? Um, that's what uh, we've just been talking about. Use the money for Keenan Davis. Uh, yes, that would be useful. Spence, uh, I think he's unlikely, given all the speculation of, you know, which clubs he's being linked with, Liverpool and Arsenal and, and all sorts, that even if they don't come in, then surely, you know, an Everton or someone like that will, will come in. And the other thing is, He's not Forest player, so um, you know if Forest don't go up, then surely Jed Spence isn't there next season. Um, Jed Wallace, obviously from Millwall, becomes a, a much more uh, viable proposition as well. Uh, another question from Mark: uh, Why do you think Nick Randall keeps such a low profile, given he's largely a figurehead? You'd think he'd be appearing in the media more regularly. Yeah, I don't think he's. I don't think he's one for that. Um, for, he never has been since he um, arrived at the club. He tends to issue the, the statements. I know he's done one or two uh, interviews over the last six months or so. Um, I don't think he particularly wants to, and I 
you know, I, I have no issue with that. Um, other former chairman didn't do too many interviews. Um, uh, Nigel Doughty tended to do one or two a season. Um, Fawaz did more. Um, uh, who else? Have Eric Barnes didn't tend to do many. I have no issue, frankly, with chairman not doing um, too many interviews. Um, I would like to hear from them a couple of times a season and, and also when there are issues. So there's a managerial change or there's a problem or, you know, they need to be held to account to a certain extent. Then managers, chief executives in that scenario, I think should be um, more available to the media. But I think as a general rule, I think um, the less you hear, the better, really. Um, and I, I know that sounds bizarre as a journalist, but you know you hear from some chairman all the time, and it it doesn't sit well with me. Um, I, I, I think from time to time, a couple of times a season, um, you know, to to local media, maybe to the the Post, to Radio Nottingham, um, the Athletic, as well, um, and then maybe once or twice a season to national media, to to the papers, if if it's wanted. Um, Fair enough, but nothing, nothing more than that. You know, it should be about the manager. It should be about the players, um, uh, and I think they, for the most part, should do the talking. Particularly the manager, obviously, week in, week out, game in, game out. Um, so, yeah, that's my view. So, I don't have a problem with um, Nicholas Randall um, not doing it because he's, you know, obviously spoken to him loads of times off of tape. And he's a perfectly charming and very coherent and obviously a hugely intelligent man um so he's you know he's very um able to do interviews um but i don't think it's a problem i think i think it should be the manager generally um that does the interviews as i say not all the time but um uh, generally uh, dan says does water spin down the sink a different way in australia have you tried it or measured it do you know what? i have dan i have no idea i've never even thought of that but when we finish this What's the first thing I'm going to do is go and try it. Uh, Dan says, how does keeper Cooper keep all of the squad players that aren't playing happy? Always strikes me that that's the most difficult part of being a manager, particularly when you've got loads and loads of players. Um, so uh, I, I don't know how he does it. I, I don't know Steve Cooper at all, never met him. Um, obviously, clearly came in a, a, a while after me. I admired what he did at Swansea um, as, a, as a manager. Um, and I thought he was a good fit, as I thought many managers have been a good fit for Forrest down the years. Um, so I'm really pleased the way it's worked out. And he comes across as a, a very good guy. And people I speak to still in the in the media, Colin and Paul Taylor and people like that, um, still keep in touch with, obviously. Uh, and they have only good things to say about him on a human level as well. So um, that is that is good. How he keeps all these players happy, I have no idea. Uh, maybe just by being honest. Um, I do think it's... a uh, a difficult task for a manager um but players when they talk about these things always seem to say i don't mind as long as the manager as long as you know where you stand and if you're not in the thoughts then you're told you're not in the thoughts and then it's up to you what you do whether you get your agent busy and try and get him uh, or her to find you a, another club um uh but one way or another it's obviously working and uh, you know if you're a player who's not in the squad at the moment and not being picked and it's very difficult to argue your case given the way that Forrester are, are going. Um, so whatever he's doing, uh, it is working. Uh, listen, we'll leave it there um, for the uh, Q&A. Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, so I didn't get to all of them, I don't think, but I, they, they pop up on the right and it is, it's a little bit tricky to find all of them. But um, thank you for those that have uh, asked a question. Uh, we'll do another one in, uh, in some time. Um, in the future, uh, but not in the near future, as I say. Um, don't forget those interviews that are coming up. David Prutton coming up uh, for members later today, um, but for non-members next weekend. Um, Prutton is really good, actually. I think, uh, as I say, you really like it because he's talking about, obviously, his TV presentation and what he does these days and how he gets about that, but also uh, his time at Forest uh, under David Platt making his debut and then Paul Hart as well, and then moving into the Premier League with Southampton. He talks about that 
uh, incident where he got a 10 game ban. He'll tell you all about that as well. So uh, it's a long one uh, with David Prutton, but as I say, uh, you're going to love it for members uh, later today and for non members next weekend. Steve Chettle is on the horizon as well. And there are more that I've not yet recorded that will come up uh, in coming weeks and months. I kind of almost want to tell you who they are, but I can't quite bring myself to do it, as I say, until they're in the can. Uh, listen, thank you for watching the Q&A. Thank you for all your questions. And if you're watching back uh, on uh, the replay as well, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, then always uh, I tend to answer most questions, as many as I can, in the comments on videos uh, as well. So if you want to do that, uh, that would be great as well. I'll leave a question there. Uh, but for the time being, from sunny Sydney, uh, from my bedroom, actually, what an exclusive. Uh, it's from here. Good night. Good morning to you back in the UK.